Hey guys, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you an assignment today that you have two days to complete. So what I'm about to show you, don't get stressed out. It's not all due today. You've got to turn it in by tomorrow because there's quite a bit of work on these slides that I want you to do. What we're doing today is we're reviewing the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. Now let's get some background here. When we defeated England, when we defeated Great Britain in the revolution, we won our independence. And so now we're our own country. We're a new country. The new country, the United States of America was born in July, on July 4th, 1776. Well, that means when we won the revolution, King George III doesn't get to tell us what to do anymore. We can make our own rules, our own laws. And we do that, we learned yesterday, by creating a constitution. But as you can imagine, not everybody is going to agree on how our government should work. There's going to be lots of different ideas, lots of different opinions, lots of arguing about our Constitution. And really, the argument boils down into two sides, the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. And you're going to learn about those two things today. The standard we're looking at is describe the conflict between the Federalist and Anti-Federalist over ratification, that means to approve the Constitution, including the need of a, for a Bill of Rights. So as you read, you're going to find out some more about what I'm going to tell you right now, but um, just kind of some background to it. The Federalists wanted to have a Constitution that created a strong central government. That means the, the government of the whole United States would be powerful. It would be more powerful than the individual state governments. And it could have taxes and it could create an army and do all those things that it couldn't do in the Articles of Confederation. You'll review that just a little bit in the video as well. So the Federalists said, yeah, strong government. Woo woo. The Anti-Federalists were like, hold on there, guys. We don't think we should have a strong government because if we make our government strong when we create the Constitution, it's going to be like having a king again. We're going to have some government bossing us around, charging taxes, charging taxes, telling us where we can go and what we can and can't do. We don't want a strong government like that. The federal said, oh, yes, we need a strong government to protect us from other countries if we ever go to war again. So there is the argument. A strong government. The Federalists want, the Anti-Federalists think the states should make their own rules. The states should be more powerful than the federal government. That's the argument. So as you're going to learn some more about this today, here's what you're going to be doing. The first thing you do, you've got to do is a little video. This is very good video. It's a very, it's very informative about the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. You're going to learn in the video that they argue and argue. Finally, they agree, the Anti-Federalists agree to ratify or agree to the Constitution if they add a Bill of Rights to the Constitution. That means that list of those 10 First Amendments to the Constitution, we learned about amendments yesterday, those first 10 amendments to the Constitution that says the government can't take these rights away from citizens of the United States. That's the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. They added those because of the Anti-Federalists not liking the Constitution, afraid the government would take away the rights of the people. So you're going to be reading about the Federalist point of view, okay? The Anti-Federalist point of view. You're going to have some facts about the Federalist. You're going to have some facts about the Anti-Federalist. And then... You've got this is the first thing you're going to be working on. Remember, you have two days. There's a lot of work on here. So take your time and do a good job on it. It's going to count as a grade. Opposing views. Identify the points of view with the anti-federalist and federalist. So the anti-federalist, well, what's their point of view? Well, you've got to go read up here. You don't have to copy it. You can put it in your own words. I kind of told you what they, what they liked and didn't like. Tell me what that federalist point of view was. Did they want a strong government or not? So that's what you do there. Okay. On the next slide, this is where the work comes in. What you've got is you've got links. You'll just click on that. All right. And it's going to take you to a link. And it tells you about Alexander Hamilton here and some facts about Alexander Hamilton as a federalist. Okay. Now, 
once you read about Alexander Hamilton, you'll want to go down to these slides and find the slide about Alexander Hamilton. There it is. Okay. And you've got to put notes in here about what you learned about Alexander Hamilton. You see why I'm giving you two days? What was his contributions to the Federalist Party? Tell me, tell me some facts that you learned about him from this page. You've got to insert a picture of him. You might, yep, there's a picture there. If you click on that picture, you can copy it and, and insert it in, or you can do the, the way that we normally do insert pictures. You can go insert image, search the web, type in Alexander Hamilton. Okay, whoops. What in the world? And if you type in Alexander Hamilton, you're going to get his picture. Of course, you click it, which, pick which one you like, and drag it over there where it goes. Okay, resize it to make it fit. That's it. Okay, so that, oh, I put it on the wrong side. Sorry, make sure you don't do that. Contributions of the Federalist Party. Like I said, you got to go read about him. <clears throat> and so it's going to take some time to read. So let's read what he did. He, the Federalist Party was a Political party, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to know what Alexander Hamilton did. The Federalist Party controlled the federal government until 1801. Alexander Hamilton formed the party during George Washington's first term. Hamilton built a network of supporters for financial policies. So you see, we've just got to read here. The supporters grew into the Federalist Policy. Um, started a new government. President George Washington appointed him Secretary of Treasury. All right, so you got to read, read, read. Read, he brought strong responses across the country. What did he do? He linked together friends of the government, merchants and bakers in the cities. Um, okay. All right. So we know some things that he did. If we read this, we find out that he started the Federalist Party. He became the Secretary of State, and he found some bankers to join together to help create the financial um, foundation for our government. So we can go and put in some things like that in our own words. We can put, he started the Federalist Party. One thing he did, what else did we find? He was George, I can't top some days, how about you guys? George Washington's secretary of, uh, I'll go back and fix that word in a minute, treasury. That means he was in charge of the country's money. And what else did he do? It said he, periods there with your facts. He got some banker friends to help him with the government's money. All right, so, you know, give me two or three facts you learned about these people. Again, you've got two days, so don't stress out. you got John Jay. Now, you go over here and you click on John Jay. It's going to take you to a page just like you did. All right, then you're going to come down here and you've got some anti-federalists, and you've got the same thing to do with them. Thomas Jefferson, well, you go up here to this, click on Thomas Jefferson. you got Patrick Henry. you got to go click on Patrick Henry. So you see what to do here. And the very last thing you're going to do is you're going to click on this link on the very last slide after you filled in the information about the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. It's going to take you to this website, right? Whoops. No, nope, not this one. Where is it at? It became a major this issue website. ratifying okay. the Constitution. Now, remember, we talked about how the Anti-Federalists finally to agree, agree to ratify the Constitution if a Bill of Rights was added. And so this is about the Bill of Rights and what the Bill of Rights says. Now, it's a long page of reading, but it will actually read it to you if you watch the video. After you watch that video down at the bottom, it says take a 10 question quiz. It's not for a grade. It's just for practice. So you'll click on the quiz after you watch the video or you won't know anything about the Bill of Rights. OK, and well, where is it? OK, there it is. Question one of 10. Which historic document is the Bill of Rights a part of? I know it's part of the Constitution. Submit it, and you're going to take all these 10 questions. It'll tell you your score, okay, after you do that. So make sure you click on that link and take that quiz. So how many days do you have to get this done? Do you have to get it all done today? No, you do not have to get it all done today. 
you've got to you've got to till the end of the day tomorrow to get it done. So this is two days of work. I'm just assigning it today. You can work on it a little while today. Maybe you want to put all the Federalists down today and tomorrow go do the anti-Federalist facts and pictures. OK, so it won't be too hard or give me two or three facts about each person as you read about them on the pages. Let's see how many there are. So you got that to do. That won't take too long. You've got one, two, you've got three Federalists to look up and you've got one, two, three Anti-Federalists to look up. So you can do three of those today, plus maybe this slide, uh, this slide right here, just to tell their point of view. And then you got just three to do tomorrow, plus the little page about the Bill of Rights. And that won't be so hard. Okay. So I know it's a lot. That's why I'm giving you two days. Um, take your time and turn it in tomorrow. If you happen to be on the ball and get it all done today, you can turn it in today, but you certainly don't have to turn it in until tomorrow. All right. So I'll let you get started learning about the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. Have fun.